Hey guys, welcome back to Hawks Tools. I'm Tom. Um, this morning we got a little, we're getting the uh, closing drill press wired up and so a little job popped out of the jack-in-the-box um, and uh, we need to take care of it before we can get wired up there. So uh, it's a three-phase circuit that we're putting in and um, I've got a 4x4 uh, box cover here that's for a receptacle but the three-phase receptacle I have, this face mount job, um, no go. And uh, so we got to open this hole up. Um, I had to do one of these before, but I figured this make a quick little video uh, that you guys would probably like. So, because uh, we're going to use the the little mini pallet and the strap clamps and uh, and and the boring head, and we're going to open that up. So, you know, I could go in there with a die grinder, I suppose, and uh, and grind that out. But it's uh, uh, I don't know, it's two hundred thousandths or something like that, or uh, I, I don't remember the numbers, but uh, it's enough where it's just like. I'm going to use the boring head, it's just easier. Now I can do that in the lathe on a face plate, but uh, um, getting that centered up, sometimes it's easier to um, put the part on the machine that you can move it to position it on zero as opposed to on the machine where you position the part to zero. So in particular in lathes, this, you know, gravity is kind of working against you there, so uh, things want to droop and, uh, and do that. And uh, you know sometimes faceplate work can be a little a little goofy that way uh, you know trying to get something lined up so uh, we're gonna do it on the mill just because it's easy on the mill gravity helps us and uh, and then we can drive the machine around to get it on the spindle center line so that's one reason to use the mill on a little uh, a little thing like this anyway we're gonna jump over to the mill um, I'll get some measurements uh, again because I don't remember and um, we'll open this little hole up. Okay, so this is the one of my sacrificial uh, uh, mini pallet plates, and it's just aluminum, and it's got an array of 1032 holes tapped in it, uh, roughly three millimeter holes. Um, and I say sacrificial because I don't worry about you know drill points uh, digging into the surface, or if I have to mill something and cut into this a little bit. One of the the nice features of this particular way of doing things is I can just throw this up in the mill and take a face mill and, and knock that off and it is just dead nuts flat then. Um, it's as flat as it can be on the machine. Now you can sit there and fart around with it and indicate it and shim it and dork around with it for a while but uh, um, you know why fight things right? Dust it off once in a while and you get this nice smooth surface and it's accurate to the machine. Now for this little goofy project here Excuse me, uh, we're not going to need to do that because this edge is so thin that, you know, we could spend, you, you wouldn't be able to detect, um, um, you know, a tilt error unless it was uh, was massive like that in a, in a little edge like that. You know, a long bore, sure, um, or a hole or something like that, you're going to want that real perpendicular, but for this, we're not. So anyway, we're just going to nail this sucker down um, and um, get to it here. So, if I, you know, sometimes you get lucky and the, these holes that mount this thing are the same size as my, uh, as my pallet screws here. So that looks good. All right, so I got one corner. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'm looking what, that looks good there. That hole's close to the, close to the edge. And these are these, you know, these are just made out of cold rolled steel. I think I've showed these before, but... Uh, um, I use the heck out of this thing for goofy little jobs like this just because it's, uh, um, it's quick to set up and, uh, and it really holds good. So, so we're going to use, I think we'll go over here because three points on something like this. I'm going to use a longer one here and then it's got a little heel screw. Um, Pick that up, just that a little bit. Make sure it's not diving in a hole there. Okay, so I'll crank those down a little bit. Okay, solid. 
All right, so then we're gonna we're gonna bore that to fit. Let's see what we got. So this is oh yeah, 2.2, and we're gonna give it a little bit. There's no reason for it to be uh, about 2.25. Yeah, I like that. And then what do we got here? Yeah, 2.1. It's two and an eighth, two and a quarter. Okay, so we got an eighth to come out of there. Okay, so in this situation, we're gonna Let's see that, that mess with the. Oh no, it's still good. I'm just gonna drop the chuck into the into the hole there, and all I'm doing in this situation, I just want to get a rough centering here. So I'm looking at this space here on the sides, and I'm just eyeballing it. So when you compare, if you compare two spaces, okay, it's really easy to see a difference between those two spaces. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the side of the chuck here, and the space between here, this annulus, that's what they call this, a little annulus. I know it's funny, but that's what we call it. Um, and um, um, we're looking at this gap. And so what we're doing is we're just kind of eyeballing that gap and making that gap look equal. And then I'm going to do it, so that was a Y direction. I'm going to do it on the X direction here also. Because when we subtract from one gap, we add to the other gap. So it's actually fairly sensitive. Uh, and your eye can really, your eye can really uh, pick up on that. Okay, so, and I call that, you know, eyeball centric, right? So I'm gonna, just for fun, I'm gonna zero the DRO, and then we're gonna get a, we'll get an indicator and we'll sweep that. And, uh, and you know, just see what the difference between eyeball centric and, and deadly centric is. All right, so I got the indicator in there now. Let's give it a little, uh, I bumped it, bumped the table with my leg. All right. It's got two holes in it. Right. This is a small edge to indicate on, but we should be able to get something good. Come up a little bit. All right, so minus four. Plus six. Try that. Mm -hmm. Two plus two. All right, close enough to plus two. Now we, we obviously we can't drop into that notch, right? We'll just try to get close. See what do we get? What was that? All right, so we're going to come back to 10. Theoretically, this should be plus 2 also, but never know how. Oops. That's 15. Alright. Ah, okay, that's better. I'll just go on the other side of that hole. So that's plus 12. Can't tell if I'm on the same rotation there. Well, our little 
little hole here is not very round. Is that minus minus three? Yeah, that holds a, a, a wanker there. So I'm having to kind of go diagonally here. Doesn't give me a direct reading. All right, then we're tw clock twelve and clock twelve. Okay, so that's as good as this thing's gonna get uh, with this wagged out hole. So I'm looking at the DRO, okay, and remember we, we eyeball centric lined it up, and now this is um, done with an indicator. So the X axis is about five thousandths and the Y axis is seven thousandths. So, you know, just eyeballing, uh, it gets you well within the range of the indicator. And um, um, now let's, before I blow it, remember to reset the, <laughs> the DRO. All right, we got the boring head in here. And I always do that. I always grab the wrong Allen wrench because my I have two boring heads and they they take a different Allen wrench and I always forget which one's which. So okay. Now hopefully we can offset this far enough. Catching it right there. All right, do some boring. Now we're gonna go real slow here. We got an interrupted cut. Uh, that'll be 50 thousandths on the diameter. That's it. We're kind of done. Let me get this out of the way. Well, that was.
doesn't that much. Okay. Voila. I I forgot to uh, while I had it clamped down to to drill the uh, um, the three mounting screws, um, but this is probably a better way to do it anyway. Uh, and here's why. Uh, at least I'm going to try to sell you on that idea. Um, it's a three-hole pattern, and um, on the part, it's. Uh, it's kind of a slotted hole, right? So we don't really have a center or a reference. So we would have to determine what the the bolt circle is on this three hole pattern, either by measuring the chordal distance or measuring off of this cylindrical diameter and getting some offset and then doing some math to figure out what the what that is. So okay. It's an electrical plate, all right. So once again, keep the keep the goal in perspective, right? So what I did was I just dropped it in there and I uh, uh, kind of transfer marked it with a sharpie, and um, and now and I center punched it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna drill it kind of manually in the center punch marks, and then we'll. While we're in the mill here, we'll go ahead and tap it too at the same time. And all these electrical fittings, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know uh, how it got started that way, but uh, a lot of them are 632 thread, so which is, you know, most machinists. Uh, uh, don't really like 632. So I'm just going to put this in neutral like this. And it's this thin sheet metal. I'm just going to use a little bit of oil here. Need three hands for this thing. I want to give it a little pressure with the quill to get it started, but I got to hold the part down too, right? And this would be pretty hard to power tap this way. <laughs> Although it might be uh, uh, entertaining on YouTube to watch it. All right. That's it. Okay. So now I can, uh, which way does it go there? One of these is up. I put the 20 amp thing up. Okay, and it looks like I'll be able to get a screw in all of those, no problem. So, anyway, cheap co.